everyone, Matt here from Docs Running, and today we're gonna to do a comparison review of the Saucony Guide 17 and the A6 GT 2012. The reason for this is they are both moderate stability tra daily training shoes that have completely changed in the last couple of years. Neither one of them have posts anymore, which was kind of standbys for both of them. Now they're using more kind of natural, not natural, but more new age concepts of guidance and stability to provide what was previously done with posts. They both are shoes that I've really enjoyed the last year. I've gotten 100 miles on each one of them. Both of them I have 100 mile reviews on if you want to see that. But I wanted to compare them because I feel like they're similar enough that some people are going to be going, hey, which one might work better for me? But there's some massive differences that I want to talk about to help you make that decision. So let's start with specs first. The Saucony Guide 17 comes in at 9.4 ounces for men's size 9, 8.1 ounces for women's size 8. The GT2000 comes in at 9.5 ounces for men's size 9, 8.3 ounces for women's size 8. Stack height wide, the Guide 17 is coming in at 35 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot for a 6 millimeter drop. The GT2000 comes in at 32 and a half in the four, in the heel, sorry, and 24 and a half in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. So somewhat similar. The foams are very, very different and the rides are really, really different. So the Guide 17 you can see is a very rockered ride. It's still using Power Run with a Power Run Plus insoles. They're kind of more, not traditional EVA because it's definitely different from the past, but it's kind of more of that EVA ride, but it's really rockered. So if you want something that rolls along really, really well, the Guide 17 is going to be more of your shoe for you. Whereas the G2000 really changed because yes, you know, the bevel's better and ASICS has struggled with that a little bit, but it's getting a little better, but the ride is much more bouncy in the ASICS GT2000. Um, the new foam over here, the Flight Foam Blast Plus, and the pure gel in the heel does give quite a bit more responsiveness and bounce. So if that's something you want a bouncy ride, the GT2000 is gonna be your best bet. If you want roller and rocket ride, the Guide 17 is gonna be a little bit better. The way they're doing guidance is also a little bit different. Theoretically, it should be the same, but how it ends up happening is a little bit different. If you want more of that centered ride, where if you go lateral or medial, the Guide 17 is gonna be your best friend, where it rolls you forward, it kind of focuses on central forward motion. There is, it does feel like there's medial stability on the me on the heel midfoot and forefoot actually there is also sidewalls on the lateral aspect that provide a little bit of guidance with the lateral heel and midfoot so if you go either way and you just want to be kept in the middle and you kind of vary the guide 17 is going to be your best friend where it's a g2000 even though it's new age, it is much more of that kind of traditional stability where it feels like most of this stability and pressure is on the medial side, especially in the heel and midfoot. It is very stable overall. There is a sidewall in the lateral aspect, but it just feels like there's more of that medial pressure that some people might want, whereas the guide is much more centered. The guide actually took me a second to get used to because I was used to more of that medial stability and it really kept me in the middle. Once I got used to it, it was very, very comfortable. But Again, sometimes I want a little bit more bounce. Sometimes a little bit more, I want more of that media stability. And both of them, once you wear them, they break in really well. And I haven't noticed that pressure in a bad way. So both stability shoes, how they're doing it, how they're doing guidance is a little bit different. The uppers are the last thing that are really, really different. Where Asics, classic Asics, Asics GT2000 fits just a little bit more snug. I would actually call it like a performance fit. And it feels really good for someone who, like me who likes lightweight trainers. The Guide 17 has a little bit more room. The forefoot's a little bit wider, midfoot's a little bit wider, blocked the laces down a little bit, but didn't have an issue. And the heel are fairly similar, if just a little bit more snug over in A6. The counters are fairly similar. There's a little bit less flexibility, or sorry, a little more flexibility over in the guide, but they're both fairly stiff. So if you need a stiff counter, you're going to be fine. Both of them have a ton of padding in the heel counters. If you're sensitive, you should be okay, unless you're really sensitive to those things. But overall, these are both great shoes. Now on the lighter end, so being under 10 ounces in that mid nine ounce range, which is really, really great. Both of them have rides that kind of work well if you want to pick up the pace a little bit. I do prefer the foam in the A6200 for picking up the pace. But the other thing that they really excel at is doing daily miles and long runs. Both these are shoes of someone who needs some stability. I can rely on these for doing 12, 13, 14, 15 miles, whereas a lot of other shoes I cannot. So definitely great for getting your daily miles in. And the other thing is durability has been awesome. Again, I have a, over 100 miles on both these. Barely we're on the outsole. They're going to last you a good long time. So if you want something good bang for your buck, I think both these are great options. And hopefully this video helps you decide which one might work better for you if you need a stability shoe. But I'm really enjoying these. I'm going to keep getting miles on them and I'll update you as soon as I possibly can.